Hello guys, what's going on? Today we will talk about once again Mac OS X Snow Leopard. Why that? Well, my video, Can You Still Use Mac OS Snow Leopard in 2019, got quite a lot of attention and things were different a year ago. And I think since it got so many views, I owe you an update. So can you still use Snow Leopard in 2020? Well, it all depends on your personal needs. But before we'll get into all of this, just a quick screenshot of the worldwide market share of Mac operating systems. So we get 52, almost 53% running the latest Mac OS 10.15 and Mac OS Snow Leopard 10.6 is not even on this chart anymore. So we got a teeny tiny user base that still wants to hold on to 10.6. So why would you use that? Well, couple of reasons why you would want to use Snow Leopard in this day and age. Number one is you have an old Mac, for example, 32-bit CPU Mac, like Core Duo, Core Solo. These cannot go higher than 10.6. Also, you might have only little RAM, and so you could maybe upgrade your system, but you don't want to do it because you are limited by RAM, and Snow Leopard is a pretty RAM-efficient operating system. It runs really fast on low RAM configurations. Or it is because of software. Maybe you need to use some legacy software that only runs on 10.6 or even runs only on PowerPC. And since 10.6 has Rosetta, which is a PowerPC program emulator, you can still use those programs. Or you need to use an old printer or old hardware that's only made for 10.6. That's why you might want to stick with Snow Leopard. Or it's just plain and simple, you like the operating system and you just want to keep it. You don't need any of the new features. You don't want any of the new features. You just want to stay with your trusty old Snow Leopard. I understand all of these three circumstances. A year ago, I would have said, yes, but you need to move on. But nowadays, things have changed. And um, I would say it all depends on your needs. As I stated in the beginning of the video, if you need latest Firefox, if you need latest Photoshop, if you're a pro guy, you probably don't even think about stuff like this, but if you need any new, basically any new software, you're out of luck. There is virtually no new software anymore for Snow Leopard. So if you're depending on the latest and greatest software, well, no. But if you want to put up with using old software, or you're fine with the software you have, you can still use Snow Leopard. But back then, in the original video, I said, yes, you could, because Snow Leopard is still a very usable operating system. It's got a nice interface. It's still pretty modern, even though released in 2009. It's still a nice interface, a still modern looking and feeling operating system, but you shouldn't use it because there is no up-to-date web browser. Now that has changed. Nowadays, in 2020, we have this awesome project, you can find it over on GitHub, that compiled Arctic Fox. These guys made basically a new Firefox version for Snow Leopard and even below, so 10.5, even PowerPC. Great stuff. And this is an up-to-date web browser. So when you run Arctic Fox, the security risk is considerably considerably lower than for example you use the latest chrome which is version 34 or the latest official firefox which is version 48 we are at like version 73 now i don't even know but pretty far away from 48 for sure or god forbid you still use safari which is version 5.1 which is released in 2013 you guys don't use it go right now to the Arctic Fox website and download it. Because uh, the the only real security risk you have is the old web browser. You don't want your banking account information stolen. You don't want your Amazon credentials stolen. You don't want to get into a phishing attack because the web browser didn't notice that. Modern web browsers will notice that, for the most part at least. You don't want any of this. So go ahead and update your web browser. And for even extended security, and that basically uh, 
is true for any operating system pretty much you you can use no script which is a, a more advanced tool you might have to look into how to use it but especially if you're on an older operating system use no script use u block origin to block the ads or even better set up a raspberry pi with pi hole so then you're pretty much set when it comes to security because mac os isn't that uh, of an uh, unsecure operating system even though it's older because when you compare it to like Windows XP which is a very nowadays very dangerous OS to live because Windows you know all the viruses are written for Windows and Windows XP ancient operating system not supported anymore even antivirus programs have left it so please if you use Windows XP and internet st stuff nowadays please don't just don't get Linux or something, but just don't. But on Mac side of things, it's different because, as I just said, 99% of all viruses are scripted for Windows. So if you, for example, get a virus in your mail, well, you can't do a lot on your Mac system then. But uh, yeah, so when it comes to security, get yourself Arctic Fox, get yourself uBlock Origin or something or whatever app blocker you want, and preferably even low script, and then you're set. So that's basically the stuff when it comes to security. That's what most people, I think, care about. Now, when it comes to applications, it's, of course, a whole nother story. I'll just list you some frequent used applications and their latest versions. For example, latest MS Office, Microsoft Office 2011. Pretty old version. It works great for most people, but, of course, no new features, no fancy new features for you. Latest LibreOffice version 4.3. As I said, works great for most people, but you're not getting the latest version. Uh, I think we're now six point something. Not sure though, but yeah. Latest iLife, iLife 11. Latest iWork, iWork 09. Latest Adobe Creative Suite, so Photoshop, After Effects, and all that. CS4, which is still, as I said, for most people who plan on using Snow Leopard, it's probably more than enough. And latest iTunes, that might get you into some issue when you buy a new iPhone or something. iTunes 11.4. So yeah, uh, you just have to deal with old software. There's no Skype anymore that works, no Skype version. You might find a Reddit page where they show you how to hack it, how to get it running with the old version. I've seen stuff around that. But um, for the most part, you do not have new software available you will have to live with old software which i think most people know when they look uh, into this video they just want to know is it secure is it still fine you know um and yes it is snow leopard you can still use it of course only a tiny percentage of users worldwide will still actually use it but you can and uh the, the, basically, the, the old video I made is now obsolete since we have Arctic Fox. And it's an up-to-date web browser, so that is a total game-changer. And I still stand by my word that an operating system is out of date when you can't get the latest web browser anymore for it. That is maybe not super true when it comes to Windows, because Windows is still supported. Uh, now we have, for example, Windows 7, which has stopped. There's no support anymore for Windows 7, but you still have latest Firefox and all that. But on the Mac side of things, um, I'd say it's obsolete when you can't get latest web browser. And since you have Arctic Fox, you can now run 10.6, 10.7, 10.8, all these versions that Apple doomed and left behind. And most, people, most developers even left behind. You can still at least use that on the internet this day, in this day and age. And uh, be safe, be secure. That's what all that matters. People underestimate security and data security and you read about data breaches every day somewhere and you definitely don't want that to happen to you. So get out there and download your Arctic Fox if you're on Snow Leopard. And if you're on a different Mac system and you just watched this video for the lols, check uh, your updated web browser. That's all I can say to you. So since this is the most important piece of software nowadays, I think you understand. So that is my little update on 10.6 in 2020. Yes, you can still use it, with caveats, of course. You have to know what you need. You have to deal with old software for some outdated software, some not available software.
But I think, as I said, most people will know and understand. So, hope you found this update interesting and tell me what you think below.